Are you sick of struggling with designs that require multiple sizes and file formats? Creating endless variations for small, medium, and large files in JPEG, PNG, and Vector? If so, then you need to know about artboards and the Export Persona and Affinity Designer. So let's check them out. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're talking about artboards and the export persona and affinity designer. But before we get to that, I wanna let you know that I'm currently working on a one hour introduction to affinity designer course. I'm aiming for September, and of course, I'll be posting it here on YouTube for free for all of you. So if you wanna be notified when that comes out, be sure to subscribe to my channel down below, and hopefully you'll be seeing that in a couple of weeks. Now let's get back to our topic for today. Now, artboards and the export persona work together to solve common problems that you experience in graphic design, mainly dealing with designs that are going to be different sizes. And for the example today, I want to use something that I like to design myself, desk mats. I'm a big fan of Printify and the products they offer, especially with desk mats and mouse pads. I've designed many for my own website, Dreaming Alien, which I kind of do a lot of 80s designs for. Lately, Halloween is coming up, and I've been thinking more about some gothic designs, so today I'm going to do a demo on that topic. Now I'm here on the Printify website and I'll search for desk mat, which is one of the products I like, as I said. And I've done this one from Spoke Custom Products before. I like their quality and customers seem to appreciate it. So one thing you notice is that it comes in actually different sizes. So 12 by 18, 12 by 22, 15 and a half by 31. I'll enable all of these and I'll just put some sample text on it for, for now. Hello world. And I'll preview it so you can see what it looks like here. So let's go to one of the nicer mock-ups. So you can see this is the 12 by 18 size. This is the 12 by 22 size. And then we have the 15 and a half by 31 size. And it's not just that they're different sizes, it's that the ratios are also different. Now back in the old days, I would create three separate files and work on all these things differently. But now with artboards, there's an easier way to do it. We're gonna go into Affinity Designer and I'll show you how this will be set up. Okay, I'm back in Affinity Designer. So let's get started creating our document. So I'm just gonna click new here. And you have the option of creating an artboard when you create your document. I'm just gonna ignore that for now. I'm just gonna do this. And the way I'm going to create an artboard is I'm going to click the button over here, Artboard Tool. And you can just click Insert Artboard, or what you can do is you can actually draw an artboard to be the size you want it to be. Now we have an artboard here. And this is an area where we can put our artwork. And what I can do is I can make another artboard if I like. I can also click Insert Artboard. That will just copy the last one I made. And you can also choose predefined artboards. So if there's something like an iPad screen you want or common phone formats, you can insert there like so. And you don't have to worry about being too exact with the size because you can always go back and change the size, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Now I only need three, so I'm gonna delete one of my artboards here. I can just select it and click delete. And what I'll do is I'll rename this one to large, since I know this will be the large desk mat. And by looking at the Printify website, I have the data on the side here. I know the dimensions of this desk mat in pixels. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do document setup. Let's make this pixels. And what I can do here is over in transform, I can change the width and height of my artboard. So I'll do that for my large one. It's 9921 by 5197. And you can see, of course, it overwrote the other ones. I can just drag it to the side. And you can always move your artboards around so they're better positioned. So I'll resize the other artboards now and I'll just fast forward through that part. Okay, and I've created my three artboards here for my large, medium, and small desk mats. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that the background changed to this brighter color of white. I'm not really a fan of that, so I'm gonna actually change the background for the artboard. If you're on the Move tool, just click Settings, User Interface, and that says Artboard Background Gray Level. This was your original one. You can just drag this down here, and it's gonna be the same as your old setting. So I prefer that, so I'll leave that there. Now, before we get too complicated, let's just point out a couple things that happened so far. So we have three artboards, and you can see they're listed over here in the Layers menu. Now, they're not too interesting yet because I haven't done anything, but let me just add a simple shape. Let's pick something, I don't know, somewhat interesting, like a cog tool, perhaps. And you can see that I dragged it over my large artboard. So over here on my Layers panel, under Large, this cog is there. Now, if I were to move it, if I were to drag it around, it would go to the different artboard. So now it's in the medium artboard. And of course I can drag it to the small and so forth. So what you can do is you can work in one artboard but drag something to the other one. You can also make a copy. So if I hold Alt and drag, now there's a copy of this object in the other artboard. Each artboard respects its own alignment. So here I can say center to the middle, 
center to the middle there and it will work. Same thing with this one. It's very convenient. Now, if you don't want things to be dragged across layers, you can disable this option here, edit all layers, and it won't happen. But I prefer to have it work across artboards. I just like that feature. So I just, I just leave it there so things can be dragged easily from artboard to artboard. Now, one thing you'll notice is that sometimes things get aligned with objects on the other artboard. So you can see this cog is kind of snapping to this other one and that can be annoying usually i don't really want that to happen so what you can do then is you can go to your magnetic tool here click this down arrow and in the candidates list say just immediate layers and children and then when you do that what happens is it will only snap to things within itself so if i draw a square there or some type of rectangle now it'll still snap to that one but if i have something in the other one it's not going to have any relation to that bottom one on the other artboard. So I find that to be a pretty convenient feature, but it's really going to depend on how you're using artboards and you know what you're trying to do. But just know that it's there under the magnetics. Okay, let's go back to Printify for a second and I'll delete this sample text. Now, one thing we have to consider is margins and bleed area. And Printify gives us this template here. We could download it, but what I often do is I just take a screenshot of it and I just paste it in my document to give me some type of guidelines of where I should be keeping my design. So on Windows, it's the window shift S key and you can grab a part here. It doesn't need to be super exact, but I'll just do that. And if I go back to my Affinity Designer document, I'll paste it here in my large artboard and I'll kind of resize it so it fits that area. And what I usually do is I'll set it to multiply and then that gives me a good idea of like where I can keep things safely in my, in my design. We need to fill up this whole document but really this gray area tells us we shouldn't put anything important there. So it should be kind of like our background pattern or something that's not too meaningful. And the important parts of our design should stay inside this dotted area. Okay, so now that we have this template done, let's start doing our design. Now I downloaded some assets from Creative Fabrica here and they kind of have this you know, gothic kind of Halloween witchy thing going on, which I think is pretty cool. I'm realizing like, since I put these here in a separate file, why don't we just create an artboard for our assets? So I can just go here, draw an artboard. I'll call it assets. What I can do over here is I can just copy and paste them in. I'll resize the artboard just so it fits. So this is one way you can use an artboard to just put data or references or assets on the side. Now what I like is this kind of border here. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna bring it over to my documents here. And it's a vector image, so if we look at it closely, it's all just points. Now what's interesting about this, I like this design because you can see the middle parts are very straight. So as a result, we can pretty easily stretch it to any size we want. So I'll give you an example here. I'll select these points and I'll just drag them over this way. I can do the same with these ones. And I'm just gonna kind of get it in the ballpark to begin with. Let me um, move this up a bit. So I think we're gonna have, want our top to be somewhere around here. Again, we wanna be safe in this safe area. Um, I'll select these and I'm just gonna, and what I'm doing here is I'm just clicking and dragging while holding shift. And because this, these are just, the points just end here, and they pick up here, when I drag all these bottom ones, we're just elongating these borders. So if you see these kind of borders that you like on some type of website and they're SVG, when it's nice and straight like this, they're really easy to expand to the size you want. And now I'll just center it to make sure it's actually perfectly centered. So that looks pretty good to start. Now, since this is gonna be kind of a dark, gothic design, I actually want our background to be black. And I think probably this border will be maybe like a, a white silver or something like that. So let's add a black background to our artboard here. Now immediately you kind of notice one problem. Well, the black covered everything. So let's put our frame above the rectangle here and you still can't see it because our frame was black. So let's make it white and you can kind of see how it's gonna look now. But there's still a bigger problem which is that we totally obscured our template. So what I like to do here is I like to take the template, drag it to the top of your artboard so it's covering everything and I had it set to multiply, but let's set it to normal. Now, of course, the problem here is our template's blocking everything. Well, there's an easy solution to that, which is just dial down the opacity. So I'll select this here, and I'll turn the opacity down, and I'll just leave it like that. 
now we still have a view of where the borders of our template are. Now, as you're designing, and especially in this design, we can probably even just turn off the template for a while because we know like inside this area is going to be safe. So it can be annoying to have this going on here, but it's good to toggle on and off from time to time just to make sure like if you're doing something on the edges to make sure you know where you are. So that's kind of a trick I do a lot when I'm working with templates. All right, let's start adding some elements to our design. So I've kind of liked this skull for a while and I want to put it in the middle here. So let's put it somewhere around here. I'll snap it to the middle. Now there's kind of an issue with designs like this you have to keep in mind. And this is just kind of a tip for designing things. And that is that when you have something that's asymmetrical like this, you can align it in the center, but the center of the image might not actually be like logically what it seems like the center of the image is. So what I often do is I'll draw like a, my own little guideline here. Let's make it like bright green and I'll center this. So let's center it. Okay, so this is the true center. Now, what happens if I center my skull? That is the center. Now, what you'll notice is that it's centering it literally the middle of this image, which is a little bit skewed because you have these leaves out here. I want it to be centered right through the middle of the face there. So I'm just gonna drag it and manually put it there. So you'll notice this isn't truly centering the image, but it is kind of logically what looks like should be the center. So when you're doing things like this with asymmetric designs, Sometimes keep in mind that just centering things, it might not actually be what is the best for the composition. And I'll start adding a couple other things. What you can do with these is if you group them together, when they're grouped, then you can center the group and it will be perfectly symmetrical. So that's something that helps. So the way I work with designs like this, where you're having big, medium, and small is, I like to do the big design first. That way you can add in all the details and everything. And when you go to the smaller designs, it's much easier to take stuff out or shrink it in size than it is to try to find new things to add in. It's kind of annoying to work from small to big because you have to like find new stuff and fill in space. Whereas it's kind of just easier to start large to begin with and then either make things smaller or take them out as you need to go back to the medium and small sizes. So. I'll start working on this and I'll cut to when I'm done with it. Okay, so this is my final design here for the large desk mat. Now I try to organize it simply. I just have the, the frame here and I just put my elements all together in one group. Then I have a background here. You can see kind of I added some extra elements to it. You know, got these birds, some moths and butterflies and stuff like that. Just cool stuff. Now I want to put it onto the medium size desk mat. So really all I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy these three groups. I'll go to my medium and I'll paste it in there. Now you can see of course the size doesn't fit yet. So what I can do is I can just start to resize it to make it roughly fit the area. And this is an example where the ratio is different. So you can see things aren't quite looking spaced as well. There's a little bit too much gaps down here and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and then I'll start resizing these so it looks good. And I'll do that for the medium and the small. So when we come back we'll have these designs ready to go and we'll start being able to look at how to export them. Okay, so I finished adjusting the designs for the different sizes. You can kind of see they're a little bit different because I had to change some of the ratios here and I compressed things a little bit. So now what we want to do is we want to export these to files. And you know, one way you could always do this is file, export, but that's kind of the slow way to do it. What we really want to do is be smart about how we do it. And we do that with the export persona over here. So I'm gonna click on this button now. So what would we want to do with this? Well, we want to export our files to different file formats, different locations maybe, different resolutions. All these are options that we can do in this tool. Now, when you first open it for the first time, you're probably gonna see layers over here. I don't find much use for that. What we really care about are slices. And the export tool works around this whole concept of slices. You don't really export artboards. What you do is you export these frames that encompass the area you want to export. Now, by default, each artboard we have is given a slice. So you can see we have our large artboard, and this corresponds to this slice over here. And the medium artboard has this slice, and the small artboard has this slice. But actually, these slices can be moved around. So our slice could be like that. You know, it could be like this. The size could be different. Maybe we want to only export part of our artboard. You know, we only want to do a little bit in the middle or something like that. So this is totally flexible. I can add more slices if I wanted to, but I don't want to do any of that. I just want to keep it simple for now. I just want our artboards to be their own slice, but just know that they're actually different. All right, so let's say that for each of the artboards, we want to export a high resolution PNG and a low resolution JPEG. Well, let's see how we would do that. So what you can do here with the slices is you can expand them and then you start to see your options. Now by default, we've got this PNG. There's two plus signs here. 
what we could do is we could add another type of PNG. We could say, okay, let's click this and this could be a 2x PNG or you know, 3x. We could change it if we wanted, but by default, those are the options. I'm going to click out of those for now. So when you see this, this plus sign is to add more of that type of file. I'm going to add a different file type itself. So I'm going to click this plus and I'm going to click JPEG low quality. And now you can see we have this different actual file type and we could do different types of JPEG if we wanted. I could do, you know, we can change the size if we wanted to. I won't do that, but we can make it as complex as we want. We can keep adding different file types here for whatever fits our needs. I'm going to keep it simple right now. So we have a PNG and a JPEG. By default, the name is the same as the artboard. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So now we want to do this for all of these options. And the slow way would be to just like manually do it again. That could take a while if we had lots of options. What you can actually do is the small one has the configuration we want to go with. You can click this button here that says copy export format to clipboard. And then what you do is you go to this one. Actually, you can select both medium and large at the same time and then say replace export setup from clipboard. So click that button. And now if I look at my medium, my medium has my PNG and JPEG low quality. And my large also has my PNG and JPEG low quality setting. So it automatically copied those settings. So you can imagine if you had something like really complex here, you can copy it to the other settings really quickly. So what will this actually do? Well, let's click export slices and find out. So we click export slices. I'll give it a new folder name exports export. Now, if I open up that folder, we can see my exported files. So we have our three JPEGs here and we have the three PNGs and I'll just open it just so you can see it. And that's what it looks like. And now that we have our files created, I can just show you how to upload them to printify. So I select my device. And in our exports folder, I'll put the large one up first. So I'll upload the large. And if we click preview, we can see an example of what the thumbnails look like. So let's check it out. So here we go. So it looks pretty good. Some lifestyle shots with the uh, mouse and keyboard on it. So as you can see, we use the artboards to make different designs, export them, and then test them out on a real life product here. Now what you can also do is you can change the file path. So for example, here, perhaps I want this to be the small directory. You can just type in small here, or you can use one of the pre-given names, but I'll just say small. And you can see it'll go into the small folder. Now for medium, maybe I want it to go into the medium. So I'll type that there, medium. And for large, I'll say large. And you can also change what the file name looks like. So for example, this PNG, if you click on the file name here, you can give it different properties too. So by default, it's the slice name and the scale suffix, but you could also give it other values like, you know, my slice or something like that. It's fully customizable. I won't go into the super details, but you know, so you can just drag these tags up there to get different presettings. I don't go too crazy with it. I'll just leave it as a default. But if I did, you could see it would have all this complicated stuff there. So I'll just, I'll take these out, but I did change the directory. So let me export again and we'll see what happens. So one click export. And if I go to the folder, now you can see that it put them in different folders. So my small one has the JPEG and PNG in here, my medium one there, large one there. So it's all very convenient and super customizable to however you want to do it. Okay, so I know a lot of you use Affinity Photo also. So I just want to give a brief overview of that. The export tool works very similar. It's just this button here, click on it. And unlike Affinity Designer, you don't have artboards, so you're not going to get slices by default. So to create slices, you just click the slice tool and just draw around whatever parts you want. So maybe you want the plate, maybe you want this little side dish here. I don't know, maybe you want that one. And everything else is the same. You can just create different file names, different file types, the directories, all that stuff is going to be identical. It's just that you need to manually create the slices in Affinity Photo. Okay, so those are artboards and how they work with the export tool. I find it to be a big time saver. I think it's something that can really help you speed up your workflow. And especially if you want to iterate on designs, there's many applications for dealing with logos and iterating on designs and things like that. So it's super convenient. If you find yourself creating multiple files for different things, I would say consider artboards and definitely consider the export persona. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.